Hey everybody, how you doing? Gabriel Bello here. We are doing some gear review and unboxing, or unboxing and review. Uh, but before we get started, you know, you know the YouTube spiel. If you can hit that subscribe button, that'd be amazing. Notification bell if you'd like, so you know when my stuff is dropping. Got a lot of stuff I'm working on, a lot of stuff I'm trying to do, trying to increase, maybe put out a couple, two, three videos out a week. Anywho, so, uh, and if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button, and if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Or if you have uh, some gear you want me to review or something that I use that you want me to talk about. So, anyway, but today, we're going to be talking about Thanks Pro Audio Equipment, and as you can see, if you saw my, my any review of the PTM-10, I couldn't remember the model number, but yeah, I have been using this a lot and I am just jazzed out of my mind I'm you know no pun intended to the Christian jazz artist but uh, yeah this thing I'm putting it through the paces and I am loving it so I'm very much looking forward to unboxing we're gonna start let's start with the baby here let's start with the uh, with mini so this is the PG PTG 12 wireless guitar system this is kinda like their entry-level model um, We'll put the price and all the and all the info description of where you can get it on their website or Amazon. It says uh, you know rechargeable receiver transmitter with USB port, effective range 65 feet uh, with around eight hours of battery life. So you can play. I mean that's two shows. That's two shows with the sound check and you're fine before you have to recharge. Minimal noise and latency supports up to five devices. So if you have an electric and acoustic, we're going to be testing it today with my Ewe over here. Um, but yeah, if you had a bass player and two guitars and a, and a, and an acoustic, I mean, you still got room for one more. So, all right, let's check it out. Looks like it just comes with the two uh, with the two things. And boy, just like everything these days, nobody wants to let you in the equipment. So we're gonna have to uh, maybe cut that out of the video. I ain't got no nails. Nails. N -n -n nails. nails oh, I said nails. Oh. N -n nails. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nails. Yeah. I'll need them snails, Apollo. That's for all my Rocky fans. Rocky fans. Look at that S car go. Look at that S car go. And now we're going to come into America. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you what, man. These companies are stepping it up with their boxes. Used to be, man, we would just chuck these boxes, but it seems like the boxes these days are so nice. Uh, you don't want to throw them out. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Bingo. See, look at that. I mean, it latches, y'all. It's It latches the box. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. Very simple, straightforward instruction manual. All of, like, three, three or four pages. Yeah, I've charged the receiver, so we might have to do a part two to charge this before we can really uh, break it down. Here's the USB cable. It's USB. Uh... Oh, that's nice. So it's a double. It's a double USB cable, so you can charge both of them at one time. I like that. All right. Let's see if it says what the charge time is. What is the charge time for this bad boy? Oh, it says working distance is up to 165 feet in a wide open space. So that's cool. Um, no, it does not say how long a full full charge would take. Hopefully it doesn't take much longer than an hour or so. So we'll have to do a cut right there. Anyway, all right, and here's the, here's one. I don't know if this is the receiver or transmitter. We'll see what it says on the unit itself. Okay. There's one part. I like it that it folds. Okay, it's got volume. It's got a volume one and two and a set. So that's the set button. We'll see what the set button does. You know, we've got to open and look at stuff before we do the instructions. But I really like the I really like this box. It's very nice. Small enough and handy enough that you can keep in your case, you can keep everything together. Okay, on, off, and this is USB, and this also has set frequency. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the receiver. 
and the other one is a transmitter. So they both have on off switches. So the on off switches are on the same spot. On off switches, same spot along with the USB charger. And then you have the settings on the other side right over there. So set volume, volume. Set frequency, frequency. Pretty cool. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. We're going to get these charged in here in a minute. Let's move this all to the side and let's unbox the big boy. Come on, big boy. Let's move this over here. All right. Thanks, Pro Audio. And I like that this, this is looking like it's going to be in a similar case to the uh, PTM 10. I had to cheat and look at the model number again. To their in ear wireless receiver. And I have to tell you guys, I'm going to be, I've got a full review that I'm waiting to do. I'm currently in the process of moving, but I cannot wait to do my full review of the PTM 10 because it is fantastic. I've used it on several different gigs and shows, and it is just bananas. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. All right. Yep, I like it. It's just so we can just ditch the box. Ditch the box, and just like the PTM 10, a nice, beautiful, pretty box for you. It says Thanks Pro on both sides. I wish they'd only put it on the top, but you know, it's probably easier to mass produce these where you know you can use either one as both sides. But okay, so let's. That's uh, beautiful. Yep, just like the PTM 10, same unit. Same, uh, everything looks pretty much the same. Here's the the receiver. It looks like the transmitter over here for the for the PTM10. Okay, it's a little different. It's a little different. So the power. This one has a a switch for the power, whereas the PTM10 has a. You have to hold it. IR, so I guess that's we can. It must have a quick setting for the for the frequency. Only has a balanced out, so only XLR out. That's a bummer um, because the PTM10 has the unit out. You know, has a quarter inch and XLR can take either one. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's got both XLR. I thought this would when I was mixed out. I thought it meant something else. Okay, here's the power adapter, it's got the rack ears, ooh, oh nice, okay, so we've got the, um, I think they call this BNC, the BNC cables to connect multiple units together, if you've got, uh, and this, this sucker's got two, so the PTM10 wireless in here only has one antenna, this one got two, so you're definitely going to be able to go far with this and then of course you've got the unit itself so and it's the uh, this is 900 megahertz let's see what the uh, megahertz are I don't think this one has a megahertz listed on the side nope alright so we're gonna to have to see we're gonna be testing to see if you can use both of these simultaneously and it comes with a oh nice so it comes with a mono quarter inch cable mono quarter cable with an adapter so I'm curious as to the application for this um, that's interesting I wonder why they gave you this I mean I, I, I mean you can't have enough ad ad adapters in my opinion but uh, let's make sure this looks alright All right, we definitely got to do a registrate and got to give it a review. Boom, 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 boom. System description. Okay, yeah. So you can. Uh, the only way to sync this is with the IR, so infrared. So you have to sync it with the infrared in order to. So there is no channel select. It's only on and off and the USB. 
and let's make sure that they actually put a USB charging cable in here. Did they not put a USB charging cable in here? Ah, they did. Here we go. Mini USB, along with the screws for the rack ears with the unit. Okay, we're going to get these charged up, and we'll be back so that we can give it a test out with the Ewe. All right, see you in a minute. So we got everything connected and I was able to run a, t a test. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have enough hands with the Ewe. You have to keep both hands on it in order for it to play. But uh, So we got them both going. We got them both connected. So the PTG-12, the PTG-11. A uh, little bit of a learning curve, but really within about five minutes I had both of them up and running. Uh, was able to, I had to go through some channel selection with the 11, the 12. I you know, change frequencies, but you can't really see what you're changing, and uh, it was a little confusing in the instructions as to which one is which, so the transmitter, the one that actually goes in your instrument, is the one that has frequency, not volume. I thought it would be volume, so you can kind of have a little bit of freedom, but they don't want the musicians to have the freedom, they want the sound man to have all that control, so maybe it's a good thing that it's over there on the receiver end, so the transmitter end for the PTG-12 has the frequency selection and the setting, and uh, it's, it recommends you to be two feet away when you first set it up, so you don't want to set them up uh, up and close. Whereas the PTG-11, you have to use the infrared and put it right up against the unit, and that has been a little tricky because I, you can't really tell. I don't know if this is the sensor or if it's just that little light where it says IR. I can't tell if that's the sensor or if that's just the light for it, but you know, you get it close enough and, and it'll, it'll lock in. I was surprised, so the PTM-10, the wireless inner unit, has crazy range. I mean, I made it halfway down my street before I started to get interference. Uh, with both of these, so the PTG-11 started to lose uh, signal when I hit the end of my driveway, which is maybe 25, 30 yards, um, but it's through the wall, so I went in and around. Um, and then by the time I got to the street at the end of my driveway, it was starting to give me some dropout. Whereas the PTG-12 didn't give me dropout, it gave me just little, um, not even, even interference, it was just little like, like bubbles. I, I would call them digital bubbles. So I'm um, going to do some further testing with uh, getting the range, obviously, and, and just getting the unit with a pure line of sight because when you're at a, at a venue, typically you don't have an obstruction between the receiver and the artist. It's all open air, you want, you know, directly, whether it's in front at the board or it's behind you so that everything can communicate without having a bunch of stuff going in between. But let's let you hear it, so let's do the, uh, let's do the 12 first since this is the uh, less expensive option. And they both sounded great. So these are gained exactly the same. Actually, I'm going to gain this at 29. So this is a 29 on my, uh, right here in my studio. Exactly the same. Let's get them up. So this is what, what this is what we got here. Let me make sure all this is going. Yep, all that's recording, right? Yep. Oh yeah, it kind of helps if you turn on your, uh, kind of helps if, if you turn everything on. <laughs> so let's turn that on, and let's turn the receiver on, so everything's on, see if it, you can hear how loud, I mean that's, Great bass response. <laughs> solid. Solid, solid, solid. And it was clean when it was working, working perfectly. And like I said, we had obstruction through walls. Uh, the signal was super duper clean. So let's uh, shut that off. I do not know. Now I charged these for over an hour. The PTG11 
was charged ready to go out the box. When I plugged it in, it had a green light and it was ready. These had a red light and I don't know if the red light means it's full. So I'm not sure. I'm going to charge it for a little bit more before I go to bed, but the red light, I think they might come charged, but uh, you know, it's always good to make sure. You just don't want to wear out the batteries in those things because that's, uh, you know, if you overcharge those things, you can you can really kill the battery lifetime. It'll it'll think, you know, oh, I got to charge 20% and that's all you'll ever get out of it. And I think they're supposed to run. These are supposed to run eight hours. So this is, uh, I shouldn't have done that. But it didn't give us much, much noise. And I really like the, the low profile. I mean, it's really low profile. So on a guitar, I mean, you can just, you know, you get it up there, you get your settings right, slap it down, and you can even slap it over here so it's even more out of your, you know, less out of your way. It's, it's really, it's, I really like it. So uh, I really, I really dig you know, when you see it, you know, online, you're like, ah, that might be in the way. But it's really, it's really, really cool. Really, really good, really good low profile. So the PTG-12 seems to have greater gain out the box. Granted, I might have turned the volume up. It's hard to see because there's no LCD uh, settings to, to, to tell you how hot you got it turned up. But the nice thing is it has a volume on the front of the unit. I'm getting some ground lift issues because of where I have this plugged in. Um, oh, that's what happens when you hit the wrong setting. So, like I said, I think the other one was just gained, just had a little bit more, uh, I might have accidentally turned the volume up a little bit too much. Let's see what, see what we can get out of the unit itself. That's all the way up. starting a red line. Okay. But I'm not peeking here. The uh... Yeah, so I dig it. Like I said, needed to do some more testing for the line of side, but um, yeah, I mean, for the value, I mean, I think, let's see, what's the price on these bad boys? So, the PTG11, if you use the affiliate link here in the description, this unit is $139. $139. Like, now, like I said, unless you're going to be out there playing 100 yards away from your unit, which actually I think this is rated for 165 feet, you're going to be all right. And like I said, we're going to we'll do a video. We're going to get some guitar players here. We're going to get my buddy Phil uh, Phil Hall and Derek Fur, the the mighty bearded one, my brother in arms, played on every record I've released. Uh, we're going to get them to test it out, and we'll do some line of sight. But it's solid. It's clean. And this is 140 bucks, 139.99, solid. And this little gem right here, the PTG12, 59.99, 60 bucks, and you don't have to fool with co with chords anymore. You can just put this down on your pedal board, put this in your guitar, put this in your, you know, winds wind instrument, or put this in your acoustic or your bass, and you're good to go. I mean, I don't think you can beat that. And most of the time, you're going to have a DI, especially if you're playing acoustic, you're going to have a DI within a few feet of you. So this, now you don't have to worry about pulling down, pulling down, uh, you know, mic stands on top of yourself and tripping all stuff. You just pop, pop, and you're done. It is beautiful. So, yeah. Uh, so far, my favorite unit is the PTM-10, but like I said, I've, I've, I've done some extensive testing with this on the road and um, playing some gigs with it. And next step, I'm going to be taking my Iwi out and testing, you know, taking the PTG-12, and then the next gig I'll take the PTG-11, and we'll just see what happens. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Stay tuned for further testing videos of these live. Maybe I'll be able to get some uh, get some video on this. And yeah, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, let me know what you think in the comments, 
Everything is in the links in the description. Check out my website, GabrielBellaMusic.com. Check out my music. And hey, you can even get one of my t-shirts. So thank you so much. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.